Hey everyone, Mike Burke here with InsideRealEstatePhotography.com and in this video, I'm gonna go over my process for setting my exposure, white balance, and focus for my real estate videos in order to get the best possible shots. All right, first off, yes, I am using a white microphone. I don't know where my black one is, so this is what I'm using today. <laughs> anyway, I'm here at a real life shoot in a senior retirement community. This is like a two bedroom unit. It's very small, it's a thousand square feet, if that, you know, very tiny, but it's been renovated, it's been professionally staged, so it looks great, and I am shooting a video here today. All right, so I just wanted to take this opportunity to address some questions that I get asked pretty frequently about real estate video shooting, such as where do I stand in the room when I manually focus my camera? What am I focusing on in the room? Also, some stuff about white balance, such as how am I setting my white balance, what am I looking for, etc. Also, some stuff about exposure, even though that's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll touch on a few things about that. I get asked a lot about, you know, windows, am I worried about the exposure out of the window, and you know, all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna address all these questions that I get asked quite a lot in this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. Before we continue on with this video, I just wanna share a quick word about our sponsor, Pixelmob. Let's face it, if you're someone looking for editing help, trying to find a real estate photo editor can be a daunting task. There are so many of them out there and it's almost impossible to know which ones are trustworthy and do good work. That's where Pixelmob comes in and helps you take the guesswork out of finding a reputable editor and connects you with the right people to do the job. Pixelmob is a website that links you to available editors capable of doing just about any sort of real estate photo editing you can imagine, including HDR blending, flambient, virtual staging, object removal, etc. The best part of all is that Pixelmob vets all the editors prior to allowing them onto their platform to ensure that they can indeed deliver on what they say they can. I also really like that there's a peer review system where photographers can rate the editors from one to five stars, giving you further tools and helping you choose the best editor to work with for your particular job. The editor also does not get paid until you are satisfied with your order. There's been such a sore need for something like Pixelmob in our industry, which is why I teamed up with these guys to help get the word out because I think a lot of us could benefit from this. It's completely free to sign up, and if you use my link, pixelmob.com slash IREP, you will receive $25 in credit towards your first order, so there's no reason not to at least give it a try. You'll also find that link down in the description of this video. Okay, so the shot I'm gonna use for the example shot in this video is pretty much the most typical real estate video shot, which is walking in and entering a room. So basically what that would be is me coming from somewhere back here, entering the room and you know ending somewhere around here. So the question is where in that movement do I want everything to be in focus? So this, the living room area here is the subject of my shot. So I wanna be somewhere around here where everything is perfectly focused and you know all my settings are correct. So you know if I had my if I set my focus here and manually focused for the room and then you know I walked into here by the time I get here you know the couch may be a little bit out of focus and you know back there might be more in focus so that's going to throw the shot off and that's not what we want so we want to stand the point is we want to stand exactly where you know we want everything to be in focus so that is where we want to set our focus that's ideally where we want to set our white balance and everything. So that's what I basically do when I set up my shot for a video shot. I just say, okay, where do I want to be? Where everything's in focus. I stand right here. So basically I'm going to stand right here and set all my settings. So I'll set focus, exposure, white balance. Cause I'm right now I'm in, in the environment. I mean, I could set my white balance back here cause I'm still like in the room in the environment. It's not going to change really. So but it's just easier. I just stand in the one spot and set all my settings. So what I'm gonna do now for the sake of this video is just to transfer this camera off of the gimbal and onto the tripod, just so it's nice and still. And I can have my monitor on it so I can record my screen and show you how I'm setting my settings right at this point, basically, for this room, for this shot. All right guys, so I have the camera on the tripod at basically the same point where I was standing in the previous shot the point in the shot where I want everything in the room to be in focus and all my settings to be correct. All right, first let's talk about exposure. First of all, I'm shooting at 120 frames per second. So my shutter speed is at 1 125th of a second, as you see in the lower left-hand corner. You know, technically 
the 180 rule says that it should be in one 250th of a second. That is correct, but I find that one 125th of a second is completely fine. I've never had an issue with it. And it just gives you that little bit of extra light. So I like to use one 125th and it works great. I have my aperture at f4 and you may be saying, why do you have it at f4 and not f2.8? You have an f2.8 lens. And yes, f2.8 will let in more light and it is nice for that reason. And I do use f2.8 for some shots when I want some like depth of field or like blurred background for instance. But in general, I found that my shots look a little soft in f2.8. The reason for that is, is that there's not much depth of field in f2.8. It's a very shallow depth of field sort of, you know, there's not a large depth of field there. So uh, I like to stop it up as much as possible. So like I use f4, f5.6 and, and, and push my ISO a little harder and I find that it gives me a sharper overall shot, I find. So again, this will depend on you and your camera because I'm using the a7S III here, which has very, very, very good ability for pushing ISO with low noise and not really deteriorating the image too much. That's what this camera is known for. That's what it's you know sort of built for. The S stands for sensitivity, light sensitivity. It's the low light king, you know, they call it. So, uh, so I'm not afraid to push my ISO, but if you're using like, say a crop sensor camera, APS-C camera with a smaller sensor, you know, or just a camera that doesn't handle low light or like an A7R series, those, those cameras don't handle pushing the ISO very well either because they have those high resolution sensors. It just depends on your camera. So know your camera and whether or not that's something you can do without having too much of a consequence. So that's my shutter speed and my aperture. So basically mainly in, in the interior of the house, all I'm doing is adjusting my ISO. So I'm gonna just crank the ISO up here. So, and again, you know, the meter in the middle where it says plus seven right now, plus 0.3, I mean plus 0.3, plus 0.7, you know, I'm not, or plus 0.1, or 1.0, that, that, that light meter there. I'm not paying too much of attention to that when I'm setting my exposure for these shots. Um, somewhere around there is where I wanna be, uh, either, you know, 0.7, somewhere around there, like 2500 ISO. Again, I'm not too worried about that. I know this camera can handle that with no issues. I'm not paying attention to the window, by the way. By the way, that's a question that I mentioned in earlier in this video that I get asked a lot. I don't really care what's going on outside the windows. My subject of the shot is the interior of the room. So if the windows are a little blown out or whatever, I'm not really concerning myself with that. I wish, yeah, if you shot in S-log or a log format, of course you can get more dynamic range. But again, I'm not, I'm not using that just for quickness of post-processing these and like editing for editing reasons. You know, I don't shoot in log typically. Um, that's a whole subject for another video. I'm just looking at like basically the couch right now when I'm making my exposure settings here, like in the interior of the room. So like even there, like I like to, I like to go, you know, the meter is gonna be usually a little over zero, that center meter where it says point plus 0.7 because it's taking in, you know, information from the windows and everything. It's just factoring that all in and averaging it. So. I'm just concerned about using my eyes and looking at the interior of the room. What does it look like exposure wise? So right there, about there is, is good. Of course, we can make tweaks to this in editing. I've gone over that in other videos. This video is about trying to get it as best as we can in camera and we always wanna to try to achieve that. So, all right, somewhere around there looks good as far as exposure. So I got my you know shutter, f-stop and ISO set. Again, I'm not touching my f-stop or shutter speed, basically the entire interior shoot of this. I'm just adjusting ISO from shot to shot. Once my aperture and shutter speed are set, like that's it. Unless, unless for exterior shots, of course, when you're outside in the sun, I'm gonna be stopping down my f-stop. So, uh, but in, in the interior, usually it's like set it and forget it. And I'm just adjusting you know, my ISO from shot to shot. All right, so that's exposure. Let's talk about white balance now. I use custom white balance for all my shots. Why? Because if you use auto white balance and say you're walking from one room into another, the lighting's different, you're gonna have a white balance shift in the midst of your shot where the colors change and you know you don't want that. It's very unprofessional looking. So you wanna set your white balance for each shot. 
And once this is set for this room, say I do, say I do two or three different shots in this room, I don't have to reset my white balance. Uh, it's already set. And, and usually my exposure settings are good to go too. All I'm doing is just worrying about my focus if I'm getting different angles in this room after this. All these things don't have to be done every single shot. Just depends. So if you're shooting multiple shots in the same room, usually once it's set, you're good. By the way, I have a custom button set for my white balance, so I can just hit a button on my camera. I highly recommend using custom buttons if you have that ability on your camera. Uh, Sony cameras are great for, with that. You have you know, multiple custom buttons. I got like five, I think, on this camera, and then you could even reprogram some of the existing buttons. So I just hit a button and this menu comes up for white balance and then I can just hit the over button and now I can adjust my color temperature to whatever I need it to be. We're just using our eyes here. So I'm just looking at the scene with my own eyes and then looking at the monitor and saying, okay, where should it be? What looks right? And, how, and does it match what I'm seeing with my actual eyes in the room? So somewhere around, somewhere around 4,100 Kelvin. That is about exactly what, almost exactly what I'm seeing with my eyes. So that's where I want my color temperature to be. Now the other thing you can do, if you hit the right button again, you'll go into this, you know, uh, little color adjustment. So if you're seeing tints, like, like Sony cameras tend to lean green a little bit. So you can go down and just give it a little magenta. So, you know, right there, a little bit, a little bit of magenta. That's basically it for white balance. So just adjusting your temperature and you know, it's not a necessary thing to do that little tint step. If, if you see something, not, not all the time do I do that, but if I notice a green tinge or something or an orange tinge, I'll go in there and just adjust that. So I just wanted to you know, show that as well and point that out. All right, now let's talk about focus. I'm always using manual focus pretty much all the time. There are times where I will use autofocus, but I'm not even gonna go into that because my general advice is to just use manual focus because you're better off. Why not use uh, autofocus? Because if you're say entering a room or passing by a door frame or something like that, your focus may shift in the middle of your shot and it will completely ruin your shot. There's no way of fixing it or saving it. So uh, just trust me, I've been there I've, from experience. I've ruined shots like that and I definitely do not recommend using autofocus generally. So just stick with manual focus. It's just the better way to go. All right, so now how do I set my focus? What am I focusing on in the room? In this particular shot, I would say the couch is sort of the focal point. So I'm gonna set my focus on that. But if that couch wasn't there, this was an empty room, I would just say that the wall that the couch is on, I would focus on like that trim that's along the wall or you know that molding there. And, you know, basically, uh, and that back wall, I would want to be in focus too, where the windows are. So, you know, we, we kind of want, we want, we want all this basically to be in focus as much as possible. We want the room to be in focus. So what are the tools that I use to help me focus? Well, first there's focus magnifier, which is a helpful tool. And that's in your menu somewhere. All, most, most cameras have that, uh, you know, all Sony cameras have that. I assume Canon, Nikon probably have it as well. But again, I, I signed this to a custom button. And if you're not sure, just Google focus magnifier, Sony or Canon or whatever. And I'm sure you'll get uh, something on Google that comes up that tells you where in the menu that is. But again, this is something I assigned to one of my custom buttons. So I have it on my C2 button. So when I press C2, it brings this magnifying window up. So I can you know, move this window wherever I want. So again, I'm gonna put it on the, you know, the pillows here. And then I'm just gonna hit the center button of my wheel and that will punch in on that. And then I could manually focus on these pillows until I see they're completely sharp. Again, you know, I'm standing in this position where I would be standing in the room where I want my shot to be in focus. So this is the exact point. I want everything to be in focus here. So um, I'm focusing on these pillows and that's pretty, pretty much as sharp as it gets. So now I can punch back out. And now I know at this point in my movement, that couch is gonna be tack sharp focus. Now the other important tool that I even use even more than the magnifier is focus peaking. And for some reason on my monitor, I can't record focus peaking. So I'm gonna to have to shoot the back of my screen here and show you the focus peaking. 
So I'm gonna do that right now and just unplug this and shoot the back of my screen. All right, so hopefully you can see this well enough on the screen. I know it's kind of hard, but what focus peaking does is outline things in the color of your choice. It's usually red, white, or yellow. I use yellow. Uh, the things that are in focus, and this is generally the tool I use to set my focus. So if you see, if I go out of focus, the couch now has no yellow little highlights around it, but once I bring it back into focus, you can see now the edges of the, of the pillows there. See, now there's no yellow. Once, once I hit the focus, now there's a yellow on the edges of the pillow and around, around the mirror here. All, you can see these yellow outlines. And that's what focus peaking is. Again, this is a setting in your camera that you can set. So just Google about your particular camera and setting focus peaking on or off and you know the tolerance of it. I set the tolerance to, I think, low. So it's at the minimum. So it really has to be in focus for the focus peaking to show up basically. But yes, focus peaking is a super handy tool. And that's generally what I use to set my focus. It's, it's not 100% accurate. That's why it's a good idea to also use the focus magnifier just to punch in real quick and, and check that it is indeed in focus because focus peaking sometimes will get you into the ballpark, but it's not gonna be like exactly in focus. So, you know, it's using like contrast and stuff to determine that kind of, and it's not 100% accurate all the time. So just punch in with the focus magnifier if you're concerned and make sure that it is actually in focus. All right, so that's really it. So now that I set all these settings to where I need them to be, and I know my white balance is correct, my exposure is correct, or at least where I want it to be correct in my eyes, uh, and also my focus is now like dead on at that exact point in my movement, now I'll just back up out of the room and do the shot movement that I showed you before earlier in the video. And now I know at that point in time in my shot that all my settings are gonna be dead on and my focus will be good and everything will be sharp focus. All right guys, so that's my basic process for setting up my shots for my real estate videos. I hope this shed some light on that process for you in case you were confused about it or needed some clarification. I hope this video provided that. If you did like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate your support. Also take a look down in the description below. I offer mentoring sessions, consulting sessions. I offer uh, practice packs, editing practice packs. There's a link to my Patreon page where you get access to my private Discord group where you can consult with me directly. Also, there's sky replacement packs down there. Tons of great stuff down there, so check that out. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you again soon on the next one.